Sorry, it's your girl IndieBomb.com. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, make sure you hit subscribe down below. So today I'm gonna be giving you guys the tea on how to secure some shadow on hours. Well, first I'm gonna let you guys know how I secured mine. So basically I networked and I finessed. So um, I had a microbiology professor who was also an infectious disease doctor. And I would go to office hours, I would speak with him after class, et cetera, et cetera. And then I told him that, you know, I was interested in becoming a PA and if he would allow me to shadow him. And of course he said, yes. So that's how I got some shadowing hours. And then I also um, networked with this PA uh, that I knew for a while. And over time, you know, I got to know her. And then I told her, that I was applying to PA school and I asked her if she would let me shadow her and she said yes. It was a private practice so it was pretty easy to get in there and get those shadowing hours with her and she was the sweetest and so was the doctor and then I also shadowed a nurse practitioner in which I did the same thing. Um, the PA that I shadowed actually worked at like a medical spa um, so I got to see some pretty cool things that's what made me want to go into like plastics or now I'm trying to get into cosmetic dermatology that's what I want to do so I'm gonna make it happen the infectious disease doctor of course I shadowed him in the hospital doing ID and then uh, the nurse practitioner was in family medicine so it wasn't too difficult to get me in but everybody's story is not like that sometimes it's more difficult to get those shadowing hours so I'm gonna give you guys some tips my number one thing, there's no specific order to this. Okay, I just wanna remind you guys. The, I guess I can start off with using what's at your fingertips. Everybody uses social media. There are tons of PAs on social media, tons of medical doctors on social media, tons of MPs, you name it. Everybody's on social media. So why not use that to contact people and to network and to get to know people and to build rapport with people, okay? Use what you got. Give me, give, give me what you got for a pork chop. Remember Chingy said that? But anyways, like for instance, there I'm in a group called The Pack, the, P, the PAC, um, Physician Assistance of Colors. We are in a group me chat and there's also a Facebook group. Hmm. There are a lot of discussions that go on. So if I were a pre-PA student, I would see who would be open to taking a student and I would build rapport with them, okay? Sometimes you just can't be like, hey, can I shadow you? I want to be a PA. Sometimes you have to go above and beyond that and let them know that you're serious about this. Build a rapport with them, network with them, okay? There's another group on Facebook literally called Physician Assistant. There's tons of forums, there's tons of resources at your fingertips, okay? So that's one way to go about it. I wrote down a little list. So let me think, okay, let me look. So the next one, I would call and contact like offices in your area, like private offices, because it's a bit, it's a lot easier to be able to shadow in a private office versus a hospital, because a hospital, you may have to be credentialed, go through background check, et cetera, et cetera. A clinic is privately ran by or owned by a doctor or a group of doctors. So it's a bit easier to go that route. That route. You could also like call or maybe even show up, have your resume ready, be interview ready, as far as attire, hair, um, your whole appearance, and be about your business, be bold, be confident, be you. And that's definitely a way to go about it. I know some people have had success doing that. Sorry, y'all. Um, so yes, be professional about it and just talk to see if you can talk to somebody, see if you can leave your resume or your curriculum vitae with the office manager or the front desk and just, just call. I mean, the worst thing people can say is no, you know what I mean? So you have to be confident in that. The next thing, um, I actually didn't think about this, but um, I ran across it on the internet. You can actually contact like your local and state PA chapters. Like here in Buffalo, we have Winnie Pie, Western New York PA, Physician Assistant Association. And then there's the New York State Physician Assistant, Assistant Association. So you can go on those websites and get contact information for different um, members of, or different officers, I should say, 
of those organizations and see where you can go from there. These organizations are always having events. They're always having something where you can go, you can possibly go to and network and meet different PAs to see if you can shadow them. Yay. See how easy that was? Um, also, keep in mind that Google is a friend and Google is a free friend. Okay? Like, don't bombard people or PAs with stuff that you can find out on your own. So I'm more inclined to help somebody if they've done the research already. You can't come to me expecting me to pass out all the information like Skittles. I don't mind helping, but you gotta help yourself for me to wanna help you. And that's with any aspect in life, whether you're a pre-PA or anybody else. Like, don't expect freebies from people come prepared come ready don't act like you don't know you know it's difficult to want to help somebody when they're like oh what is a PA but I want to become one or what does the C in PAC mean like, if you want to be a PA you should kind of know that you know what I mean you want to come prepared not that you know I'm going to say oh my god I'm never going to help you you don't know what that means but come prepared um also keep in mind that it is difficult for a lot of hospital providers to have students to shadow them okay because as I said before you have to go through um, credentialing uh, background checks it might be a HIPAA violation it's a lot that goes into that so with that being said you can also become a volunteer at a local hospital in your area um, uh, so that can make it that much easier to shadow at that same hospital. When you're a volunteer, you are already credentialed. You have a background. Well, do you get credentialed? I don't know exactly, but you get something in the hospital. I feel like it would be credentialed because you need to have all of that information for the hospital to allow you to volunteer there. You will have your background check. It'll be a much smoother transition to be able to shadow somebody in the hospital. Um... So, my next point would be to keep in mind that all PAs, even though we all started somewhere, keep in mind that all PAs are not great teachers, okay? So, you may feel some type of way that somebody doesn't want to let you shadow them, but in their mind, they might be like, shoot, this might not be beneficial because I'm not a good teacher or I don't like to have students. Like, yes, you were a pre-PA one time, and yes, we were um, PA students at one time, but that does not mean that everybody um, gives back, okay? Some people are just like, I'm just here to work. I'm not here to teach. I don't want to be followed by a student. I don't want questions. I just want to work. Just don't take it personal. You know what I mean? Everybody's not built for that. Everybody, that's not everybody's cup of tea. So you might somebody, find somebody like who you think is awesome online and following them. Like it could be me. You might think that I'm awesome and you love me and this and the third, but I might not be a great teacher. I, in the future, I would love to precept students. I can't right now. Some people have asked me. I mean, I, I can't. I'm still training myself. You know what I mean? So, it's not really beneficial to have somebody shadow me. Um, so, that's just my viewpoint on it. So, just don't take it personal. Um, and just know that every PA is not going to be like jumping for joy when somebody asks to shadow them. Maybe they're, they're very busy, like they have a, a large patient load. You won't get much out of it as a pre-PA. Um, or maybe that's just not what they like to do. You know what I mean? So just keep that in mind. Don't take it too personal, as I said before. And just keep it pushing. So, it's somebody out there who's going to say yes. But my suggestion would be to start, once you find out or once you figure out that PA is something that you really want to pursue, really start to buckle down to try to get those shadowing hours so you can apply for the next cycle and have all of your i's dotted your t's crossed or the next two cycles whenever you plan on applying you know what i mean so definitely get started early as possible um as early as possible and go from there always be confident always be you be professional uh if you want to reach out to somebody always have like your resume or cv on hand like on your phone on your files they may want to see it. They want to see that you're really about that, you know, about their, sorry, I'm getting a little tongue tied. They may want to see that you're serious about becoming a PA. Like you've done your homework. 
and you're about your business you know what i mean so definitely go forward with it the more shadowing hours may you know the better why not if a program requires i don't even know what these programs require these days i'm so out of the loop when it comes to being a pre-pa because i literally got accepted into pa school in 2014 it's 2020 the game is changing year by year so say let's just hypothetically speaking a, a program requires let's say 100 hours of shadowing girl go go ahead and do 150 do 200 you know what i mean don't do the bare minimum okay okay i'm gonna do a little bit more research on what cas was asking these days from pp pre-pa students what the what the t is so i can possibly help uh with the application process this day these days this day i can't talk right now oh my god that sounds so crazy but yes i want to try to help as much as i can do please do keep in mind that i do work full time i do a lot of stuff outside of work i'm in a sorority i try to keep my social media presence going I'm trying to do this influencer influencer skin influencer there we go um i'm uh, trying to move out of town so i'm very very busy so just please keep that in mind like if i don't respond right away it's really not personal i get so many messages i know i'm not famous or nothing but i do get a lot of messages and sometimes it does get overwhelming and i can't answer everybody you know immediately or right after they contact me so i do appreciate you guys for rocking with me i do appreciate you guys for watching my videos and supporting me continue to support to a friend to tell a friend um and make sure, again, you hit subscribe. All right, bye, guys.